Hello everybody and welcome to today's mini lecture or this week's mini lecture on the revolution. The funny thing about it is and one of the reasons I like this meme is because one it's SpongeBob and that's always fun but also because the British had every right to actually tax the colonists in whatever way they sought fit. One, they were British subjects so therefore they were under their control just like all the people back in England and Scotland uh, were under their control as well so they had the right to do that but also because the war was fought mainly for their benefit in the Americas now it's not like this war only existed just in the Americas it was in many cases the first real world war because it happened all over the world but the most benefit that they saw was the uh, elimination of the frontier land between the French and the British colonies, thereby allowing the Americans to expand more, or at least so they thought. Unfortunately, the British would not let the Americans go over and colonize that area, as we've already seen and as you should have read by now. So, as late as 1774, a lot of colonists did not fare favor uh, declaring independence from the British crown. Uh, actually, um, most Americans still saw the king as their protector from the oppressive acts of Parliament. They saw that the king was the only person who could stand in the way between them and Parliament. It was, really wasn't uh, the king that they had a problem with, obviously. It was the Parliament. So you had the First Continental Congress, which had assembled in Philadelphia in September of 1774. And what it did was actually ask for reconciliation with Britain. <clears throat> Uh, they asked Massachusetts Bay colonists, who were of course the most radical in their opposition to British policies, to also avoid uh, involving all of America in the horrors of a civil war. Because that's what they saw this potential outbreak as, was a civil war, not a revolutionary war. So in February of 1775, Parliament then declares Massachusetts to be in a state of rebellion. This declaration permits soldiers to shoot suspected rebels on sight. And in April, British General Thomas Gage received secret orders to arrest the ringleaders of colonial unrest. And to avoid arrest, colonial leaders fled to Boston. I'm sorry, actually they fled out of Boston. Uh, Gage actually decided he's going to uh, nip this in the bud. And he said he's going to seize and destroy the arms that the Patriots had stored in Concord which is 20 miles northwest of Boston. When Joseph Warren, a Boston Patriot, discovered that British troops were on the march, he sent Paul Revere, the man on the left, and William Dawes uh, to warn people about the approaching forces. At dawn on the April 19th, the troops uh, reached the town of Lexington, which was five miles east of Concord. About 70 volunteer soldiers lined the Lexington Green to warn the Redcoat British uh, troops not to trespass on the property of the freeborn English subjects. Because they were, they were not serfs, they were freeborn men. And then a shot rang out. Nobody knows who's actually fired the shot. Uh, given the situation, it likely was not a British soldier, since they were highly disciplined and highly trained. And they necessarily weren't even feeling like they were uh, going to be under attack at that point. It came as a surprise, though. Uh, so that was actually the shot heard round the world. And the reason it's called the shot heard round the world because it also not only kicks off the American Revolution, but kicks off what becomes known as the Age of Revolutions. The British troops returned fire, and eight Minutemen were killed, and another ten of them are wounded. The British then continue on to Concord, where they uh, search for hidden arms. At Northbridge, a group of Redcoats and Minutemen clash, leaving three Redcoats and two Minutemen dead. And the British then retreat to Boston, while citizen soldiers fired at the Redcoats from behind trees and stone fences, engaging in a guerrilla warfare uh, all along the way. This essentially is, or not this essentially, this is what kicks off the American Revolution. Once the shots are fired and once men die, uh, there is no turning back at this point. Actually, there could be turning back, but really there is no turning back uh, as history winds up showing us. Even after the Battle of Lexington and Concord, members of the Massachusetts Provisional or Provincial Congress uh, describes themselves as loyal and dutiful subjects of the king, who were ready to defend the crown with their lives and fortunes. 
they're still describing themselves as British. They asked the British people to protect them against the king's ministers. Again, they're not blaming the king. They are blaming parliament. They're blaming the ministers. They're blaming the people who they thought were controlling the king or going beyond the king's measures. However, George III, as pictured here, uh, dismisses the colonists' protestations of loyalty. And they tell Parliament in October, or he tells Parliament in October of 1775, that such claims were meant only to amuse. Basically, he says they're just playing with us. He notes that the Continental Congress had already uh, assumed the powers of a government. They had established an army, because they had established the uh, militia. They had appointed officers. They had named a commander-in-chief, all of the things that a government would do, especially a government in rebellion. They had also raised money to support the army. Uh, by, getting, by securing loans from other uh, American colonists or Americans. Uh, they had been printing their own money, and they had taken charge of Indian fares, and, most egregiously of all, they had taken charge of a post office. I always like ending on the post office because that uh, seems like such a minor thing, but it really is a major thing uh, for that to happen for the colonial government or the Continental Congress to take charge of the post office. Um, because that helps control the communications, uh, as it were. So that's it for today's lecture. Um, I will see quite a few of you. Actually, I hope to see everybody this week.